Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Check it out at carsandbids.com. This is the new 2024 Rolls-Royce Spectre, and it's the ultra luxury take on an electric car. You've seen the fast electric car, the family friendly electric car, the affordable electric car. Well, this is the Rolls Royce of electric cars with a half million dollar price tag to match. Today, I'm going to review the Spectre and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, huge thanks to O'Gara La Jolla. O'Gara is the Rolls Royce dealership here in San Diego, and they let me borrow their Spectre for this review. O'Gara has all the top brands, Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, Bentley, Bugatti. They're the place to go if you want a high-end car here in San Diego. I've worked with O'Gara a lot. They're great people, and I sincerely thank them for letting me borrow their Spectre for the day. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new Rolls-Royce Spectre, the first ever fully electric Rolls-Royce. And I'm gonna start with a little overview, beginning with the fact that this is not just an electric version of the Rolls-Royce Wraith. This is the Wraith. It's a beautiful Rolls-Royce coupe, but it's gas-powered. It shares some similar body lines to the Spectre, their overall design, but the Spectre is a totally different car. In fact, it's not even built on the same platform. The Spectre shares its platform with the larger Phantom and the Cullinan SUV. And of course, this is fully electric with 577 horsepower and about 665 pound-feet of torque. Big numbers, but then again, this is a big car. It weighs in around 6,600 pounds, which is a massive figure, but it makes sense considering all the luxury and opulence that must go into a Rolls-Royce. Despite its weight still pretty quick. Rolls says 0 to 60 in the low four second range, which is impressive considering its size, but it makes sense with 577 horsepower. Now, as for driving range, Rolls-Royce says around 260 miles between charges, which isn't a huge figure, but Rolls also says the vast majority of customers will do the vast majority of their charging at home, so they don't have to worry about making it to the next Walmart parking lot. <laughs> charging station on a road trip. Now, although this is the first electric Rolls-Royce, it is just the beginning. Rolls says their entire lineup will be electrified by 2030. So more Rolls EVs are coming. Now, as for pricing, well, I just happen to have the window sticker here in my hand. The base price for a new Spectre is about $423,000 with destination. And then you add options, which are plentiful. This car has a sticker price of just under $520,000, meaning it has around a hundred grand in options. And throughout this video, I will pepper in little tidbits of optional extras to let you know how much some of this stuff costs. Okay, so the quirks and features. Let's start with getting in and the key, which is wrapped in leather. Yes, the key is leather. In your car, it's plastic. Rolls said no. They didn't even bother with metal or aluminum. That wasn't good enough. The key is wrapped in leather, and that's the level of luxury that we're talking about here, and it only gets more insane. Flip over the key, and you can see the buttons, but no words, no pictures, just a triangle, a square, and the Rolls-Royce logo. That is rich people code. They know what it means, you do not. <laughs> but the door, once you've got it unlocked, the door handle is in front, which is certainly unusual. You might be wondering why. It's because the door is rear hinged. It opens towards the front to make it easier for you to climb out, and it opens automatically. You pull it open and give it a little tug, and then it automatically, electronically opens the rest of the way, and then you can climb inside. But we're not quite there yet, because on the inside, of the door J 
jam, you have this silver circle with the Rolls-Royce logo. That's an umbrella. You can push it, pull it out, and then use it as you walk around rainy London driving your Spectre. Now, in this particular Spectre, the umbrella canopy is black. I think that's the part that makes it the actual umbrella. It's black and it costs $1,775 extra. $1,800 extra to make your umbrella canopy black. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what it is. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> but there's still more to cover with the doors, starting with the stars. Okay, so by now it's pretty well known that Rolls Royces have a Starry Night headliner. You can see it here. It makes the ceiling of the car look like a beautiful night sky. But they're now offering the same thing on the doors. If you pay extra, you can get a Starry themed door design, which this car has. And the cost of that option is $13,300 extra for Starlight doors. And and get this, when you get inside the Spectre, you sit down and put your foot on the brake, you're ready to drive, the door closes automatically. You don't pull it, you don't push a button, you don't talk to it, it just knows what to do, and you do nothing. It's handled electronically and automatically. It is wonderful. Then again, it makes sense that the doors self-close because they are behemoths. Like I said, this car weighs 6,600 pounds. Rolls-Royce says they've put 400 pounds of weight in this car in sound deadening alone. In other words, to make the car quiet, an extra 400 pounds just for that. So the door is massive. It would be heavy to pull it closed. So it happens automatically. And it's not just sound deadening that makes this door and this car so heavy. Take a look at the power mirror control. It's this aluminum joystick. It's not plastic like in every other car. It's aluminum because Everything has to feel and look beautifully, and that theme is repeated all throughout this car. There is basically no plastic anywhere in here. But anyway, next up, we climb inside the Spectre, and I'm gonna start this tour of interior quirks and features with materials, because they are part of this experience. Take a look, for instance, at the floor mats, which you can see are this beautiful, thick carpet. Not just regular wipe-your-feet carpet, like in most cars, but they're fuzzy, comfortable, fantastic, beautiful floor mats, and it continues. The dials are lined in leather. Look at this. The climate control adjustment dial is wrapped in leather. In your car, you might be lucky to have a leather-wrapped steering wheel. In this car, you have a leather-wrapped dial to turn up the fan speed. And speaking of the climate controls, the vents themselves are this beautiful chromed metal, which looks and feels fantastic, and even even the switches to close and open the vents are chromed, heavy, metal, everything is perfect when it comes to materials in a Rolls Royce. Now, another great quirk of this car is the theme of stars and starlight. I love stars, so I love this. I already mentioned the door panel is covered with this crazy starlight option, and the headliner, you can see, looks like a starry night sky, which is a really cool feature, kind of a gimmick, but you got to admit, it's pretty cool, but there's more than just that. On the passenger side of the dashboard, you have Spectre printed in like a galaxy or a Milky Way of stars, and it looks really cool. And when you want to use the voice control, you push the microphone button on the steering wheel, and look in the screen, the Spirit of Ecstasy hood ornament emblem has appeared all in stars. It's a very cool touch. And by the way, if you're wondering, that starry headliner that I mentioned, that is free of charge. I guess it appears standard in the Spectre, but the little galaxy design on the passenger side of the dashboard, why that is $5,425 extra. And the clock that appears next to it, that is $4,725 extra. So in this 18 inch space, you've just spent about $10,000. 
Okay, so beyond the stars, the beautiful materials, let's move on to some unusual and quirky controls. Starting here in the center console where you have these two switches, they look like window switches, but they actually control the doors. I mentioned earlier, you get in, put your foot on the brake, the door closes automatically, but if you're the passenger, obviously you can't put your foot on the brake, so you press this switch and close the door, and the driver can do that also if they want to close the door but aren't yet ready to drive. You have these switches here to do that. And here's an interesting question quirk in all new Rolls-Royce models. The climate control temperature adjustment is this dial here. You can see it goes from like red to blue and there's an upper and a lower part of the dial. You don't have actual temperature readouts in this car, but you just adjust until it feels comfortable and then you're all set. An upper or lower depending on where you want that temperature air to come out. And there's more interesting controls. For instance, the presets in the center labeled 1 through 8 they don't just control radio presets. You can program them to do a lot of different stuff all throughout the car. Like you can have one preset send you home in the navigation system, for example. And as you run your fingers over the presets, the infotainment display gives you a preview of what each item does in case you've forgotten, which is a brilliant idea. In this particular specter, the last preset has been saved to lower the hood ornament in front. You press it and the spirit of ecstasy is gone at the push of a button, literally, and now you're in stealth mode. The spirit is away and no one will know you're driving a $520,000 car unless, of course, they look at the rest of it. <laughs> but it is still a cool party trick. Next up, you look into the overhead console and you'll find some buttons here you won't see in any other vehicle. This one has stars on it, and then the one next to it has two other stars. <laughs> The one on the left turns on or off the Starry Night headliner, in case you don't want it. And the one on the right changes the brightness of this headliner. <laughs> Star buttons in a car. I guarantee you don't have this in your car. One other interesting item, the gear selector in the Spectre, is just this stock coming off the steering column. Pretty subtle and unassuming, actually. One interesting item, there's a button on it labeled B. That stands for braking, and it increases your engine braking. So if you turn that on, it'll actually increase your regenerative braking as you're driving along to help charge the electrical system in this car, or turn it off and the increased regen goes away. Now, as for the screens and technology in this car, the center screen is pretty good. Using technology surely borrowed from BMW, which is Rolls-Royce's parent company, it's excellent. You can see it's a touch screen, very easy to respond, does what you want, it's intuitive, nice, easy to use, and I love the home screen where you could just kind of slide the different tiles to see whatever it is you want displayed front and center at home. This is a great infotainment system. It works reasonably well. The screen is a little small considering this car's price tag and what some of the competitors are doing, but very usable, very responsive, excellent touchscreen. And it's not just a touchscreen. You can also adjust it using this dial here in the center, wrapped in leather, of course, and some buttons around it. The buttons go to various parts of the screen, like navigation map or home or your telephone, the dial allows you to select individual items on the screen, and as you twist the dial, the spirit of ecstasy stays perfectly straight up. It doesn't twist with it, which is a cool party trick for this car. As for the gauges, the gauge cluster, of course, is also a screen in this car. The gauges are quite simple, actually. Nothing too cluttery or excessive here. Over on the left, you have your power reserve, which basically shows how much power you're using in any given time. In the center, you have your speedometer that shows, of course, your speed. Over on the right, you have range. There's a few other things here, like the temperature, the time, your odometer, but basically, this is a pretty low-key gauge cluster screen situation. Not much going on here. They wanted to keep it simple and elegant, I'm sure. And next, we move on to the back seat in the Spectre, which is actually a little bit annoying to get into. The rear hinged doors and this sloping coupe roof line actually make it a little bit harder to get into the back, even though the rear hinge doors do help you with getting into the front. Now, it's worth pointing out, this is going to be the case of all Spectre models because these are all coupes. There's no convertible, there's no sedan, there's no SUV. At least for now, the Spectre is a coupe, and so getting into the back, a little difficult. But one 
once you're back here, you will find it is everything but difficult. For one thing, there's a lot of space. Even though this is a two-seat coupe, it is a huge one, and there's a ton of room back here for rear seat passengers. These are adult-sized back seats, and they come with some beautiful amenities. For example, your own individual rear climate zones. You can see here the dial to adjust fan speed and the dial to adjust temperature in the back. You never see that feature for rear seat passengers in coupes, but it's here in this car. You also have heated rear seats, as you can see, another nice luxury touch, and sitting in back gives you greater access to gaze at the starry sky and the headliner, which is just fantastically beautiful. And of course, you have the same wonderful materials as you did up front, like the chromed climate vents metal that feels so nice, the chromed metal climate switches to open or close the vent, and the leather-wrapped fan speed dial is carried over back here. Some other nice touches in back, you have your own opening rear window. This button here is your window switch. You can put your window down, which you don't always see in coupes, but you got it here. There's also cup holders in the center between the two rear seats, and you have this armrest, nice and comfortable, but it doubles as a storage lid. You can open this up and you have space to put stuff or plug in your devices because there are two USB-C charge ports in this storage area as well. So even though you're in the back seat of a coupe, which is usually kind of a penalty box, almost feels like jail, in this case, it's a pretty beautiful place to be. And by the way, if you're wondering about the color of this interior, it is orange, as you can see, the seats and various other pieces. Rolls-Royce calls it Mandarin, and amazingly, it is free of charge. This isn't some $20,000 optional interior. However, here's something crazy expensive. You see this little white piping on the side of the seats? Not the stitching. That is separate, and it has a separate cost. Just the piping on the side of the seats, front and rear, costs $4,800 extra. Rolls-Royce calls it colored seat piping in cashmere gray. Okay, so moving outside the Spectre, you're probably wondering what is up front. This car doesn't have a gasoline engine. It's purely electric, but it has this long front hood like most Rolls-Royce models do. So what's under here? The answer is, well, actually, there's a quirk we have to discuss before we get there. To open up the hood, you pull a latch in the driver's footwell. You actually pull it twice to unlatch the hood, and you can see, do that, and the spirit of ecstasy goes away. It goes, like, down and to the side, I guess to provide enough clearance for the hood to open. It's kind of an interesting trick. But anyway, opening up the hood, once you've got it unlatched, you just lift it open and you discover there is a massive silver panel under here. There is no engine. There is no front trunk. You don't have any extra storage up here. Instead, a massive, elegant, actually, silver panel that just reminds you, you're a Rolls-Royce owner. Don't open your own hood, we can take care of that for you. Now, despite the fact that this car does not have an engine, it does make a noise. Some governments mandate electric cars make a noise to alert pedestrians because otherwise they'd be completely silent. And this one makes rather interesting noises. Here it is in the front. And here it is going backwards in reverse. Amazingly, those noises were designed by Hans Zimmer, who is an Oscar-winning music composer. He did the score for the movie The Lion King. The guy who did The Lion King score also created the sound of a Rolls-Royce Spectre going down the street. That's just hilarious. Now, two other things worth noting from here. Number one, you have a giant grill. You can see very distinctive Rolls-Royce design element in this car. The only thing is, you don't actually need it. An electric motor doesn't need air to come in from the outside, so this grill is mostly closed, as you can see behind it. It's just there for show, but it certainly looks good. As for the wheels, these are 23-inch wheels. They are massive and... They are expensive. According to the window sticker, the wheels cost an extra $10,675. Rolls-Royce calls them 23-inch wing-spoke part-polished wheel, over 10 grand. 
By the way, one other cool thing about the wheels, aside from their massive expense, the little RR emblem in the center of the wheel, you can see it's upright, and in fact, it always is. That emblem is weighted, so even as the wheels turn, it always stays upright, so the Rolls-Royce logo is always shown in the correct direction whenever you're driving the car. That is a nice little detail. And finally, we move around to the back of the Spectre. A few interesting things to discuss back here, starting with the rear end styling. Now up front, there's not that much distinctive, especially with the lighting, which actually looks pretty BMW-ish, but come around back and you have these very distinctive vertical taillights. They look beautiful and they are beautifully integrated into a beautiful rear end. The back of this car is so smooth and so clean and so curvy and basic. It's not cluttered by unnecessary design. It just looks, well, elegant. It looks Rolls Royce, which I'm sure is what they're going for, and they certainly succeeded. It's a gorgeous and very distinctive back end. But climb into the trunk of the Spectre, which is of course power operated, and you'll discover a few interesting things. For one, the entire trunk is carpeted, not just the bottom, but the sides and even on the inside of the trunk lid. It's all carpeted. So whatever luxury good you're transporting will have a nice cushy ride back here. You will also notice the trunk is quite deep. You have a large space where you can push stuff all the way back up against the rear seat. So even though you don't have any front trunk storage, you got a pretty decent rear trunk in this car. And there's even more storage below. You lift this leather loop, you raise the cargo floor, and you have extra space beneath where you can put well, a lot more stuff if you want to. By the way, one cool thing about that lower trunk storage compartment is on the trunk floor that you lift up to access it, it's magnetized. So you lift it up and then you stick it on this magnetic panel on the top of the trunk and then it stays put. So you can search around in your lower trunk for whatever you want without having to hold up the trunk floor like some plebeian. And one other cool quirk of the trunk area in the Spectre, the the button to close it right here is the outline of a Rolls Royce with its trunk open. You push that and the trunk closes, which is a pretty cool little touch. Not just a generic car. When you pay 520 grand, your buttons have images of your exact car on them, as they should. All right, driving the Spectre. Now, the first thing I think about this car 577 horsepower, it's a big number. It's not that much compared to a lot of new electric cars. You know, you can get a thousand horsepower, no problem in a lot of electric cars. More batteries, more motors, no big deal. These cars are all incredibly heavy, so why doesn't Rolls-Royce do that? Well, they're not really intending to be a high performance brand. The goal is just enough power to do what you wanna do. They used to call it sufficient horsepower. And that is what we have going on here. This car has sufficient power. And I have to say driving along, that is what you feel. It actually feels quicker than I was expecting. You put your foot down and you do get a pretty instantaneous rush of a decent amount of power, but it is not a sports car by any means. That is not the goal. That is not what they deliver. However, what they do deliver is a quietness that is unlike any other vehicle. It is unbelievably calm and serene in here. You're just completely and utterly insulated from the sounds that go on around you. Like I said, Rolls-Royce has put 400 pounds of sound deadening equipment into this car. It certainly shows. It does not feel like anything other than a complete chamber of quiet, of pure silence inside this car. It is wonderful. Now, let me floor it here. Woo! Wow, yeah, no, pretty decent uh, acceleration, particularly when you consider the fact that this car ultimately weighs 6,600 pounds. It's fast. I don't want to say that it's like sports car crazy, but it's faster than I expected it would be given the power numbers. You know, I've driven 800, 900 horsepower electric cars. They don't feel a lot faster than this one. This is uh, surprisingly quick. You knew that Rolls-Royce was eventually going to come out with an electric car. It actually kind of makes sense with the brand's ethos because ultimately you can make electric cars be so silent and that's exactly what they've done. Now, $525,000 for only 260 miles of range 
range and for only 577 horsepower, 0 6 and low fours, it doesn't make sense on paper. You can beat that with other cars that cost a lot less. But that has always been true of Rolls Royces. They have never been on paper the cars that make the most sense. You must experience them. You have to sit inside this car and feel the wafting. You have to feel the quiet, the silence, the comfort of this car. I mean, you don't hear the powertrain at all. They've completely eliminated that. You don't hear any form of anything. There's some tire noise on really rough roads, but it's quite impressive how this car glides along quietly, serenely, luxuriously. It is just, it feels so good and so nice. Now, one thing that I find interesting is that Rolls-Royce decided to lead their electric vehicle world with a big coupe, which is a segment of the market that is pretty much dead. Um, frankly, I, I wonder about the wisdom of that decision. I think an SUV maybe would have made more sense or even a sedan, which kind of Rolls-Royce is known for. But instead we got a big coupe, which is a surprise. It does limit the buyer pool a little bit, particularly when you consider just how many people want, you know, SUVs or at least practical four-door cars. The simple truth is, I mean, for most people, you'll never understand. You'll never be able to figure out why this costs so much money. And, and I get that $525,000, ridiculous price for this car. But the thing that I've discovered about Rolls-Royce ultimately is Mercedes-Benz, the S-Class, that's all the luxury car you'll ever need. It gets you 99% of the way there. But to get that last 1%, it doesn't, it's not a linear cost. That last 1% is like this in terms of how 400 pounds in sound deadening materials and the Starry Night headliner and this beautiful leather and the feel and the sound and the everything about this car is just on a different level in a way that is difficult to attain. Most people probably won't even, wouldn't even be able to discern how different it is. But if you've already had all the S classes and the other normal cars and you want to step up to something truly, truly opulent, truly obscenely luxurious, this does that. And, and Rolls-Royce has managed to do it with an electric car in a fantastic way that doesn't compromise on any of its rolls royce It feels like a Rolls-Royce, but even quieter, just as smooth, just as beautiful, just as gorgeous inside, but now you have an electric powertrain. It's almost like the switch is seamless. If you know Rolls from before, you know Rolls now, and I'm sure that's what they were going for, and they've succeeded. And so that's the new Rolls-Royce Spectre, the most comfortable, most opulent, most luxurious electric car ever. And now it's time to give the new Spectre the Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 69 out of 100, which puts the Spectre here against other high-end luxury cars and expensive EVs. The Spectre, however, is in a class of its own, far more beautiful, luxurious, impressive, and expensive than a Lucid Air or a Tesla Plaid, and more athletic than most other Rolls-Royce models thanks to big power and decent handling. The drawback is price, as the Spectre is tremendously expensive. Then again, would you expect anything else from Rolls-Royce?